Okay, am I live? Are you sure, YouTube? Oh man, between YouTube and the cable company, like I'm just, I'm just done. Mm -hmm. Great, and now I'm getting messages from five days ago. Okay, sorry, yes, um, hello and welcome back to another, good God. Welcome back to another live stream. We are here for the How Not to Die book club. I apologize that I had to cancel on such short notice. I assure you, I did that to everything else in my life. It wasn't just you guys. Hey, Miranda, thanks for joining. I, I don't want to go too much into it in this video, but my um, entire life, Levi's entire life has just like literally imploded or exploded over the last two weeks. I feel like everything's just been falling apart and I've been trying to pick up the pieces. Hi cat, hi Oakley Sunshine, we got Alley Cat Girl here and Bonnie Core. It's nice to see all of you. Lee, Alaska, thank you so much. She says I'm one of her heroes. I appreciate that. I didn't feel very uh, It's just been like two weeks of really overwhelming shit. And then I woke up yesterday morning and my car had all of the warning lights on for brake failure. And it said to take it to the dealership immediately where I could get into a serious crash. So I have no idea when they're going to find the time to fix my car, but how many thousands of dollars it's going to cost, but... I'm just about done. <laughs> okay. Oh, we got Abby. Hi, thank you for coming. Jamie, Michelle, Devin. Hi, welcome. Thank you guys so much. Okay, so today we're going to be covering um, berries and other fruits. So I am super stoked about this, especially considering I have my banana berry turmeric smoothie right here that I am enjoying. Mm. Oh, I feel you, man. Like, <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys for, for, for your reading and, and sympathies. It's been a rough ride. We had some trouble with Levi's car as well. Um, and it, it just wasn't up to the task that we needed it to do, so we ended up having to trade his car in for a more capable truck. It was Friday. It was, it was very and make that happen and my car went this week and uh, we and family member acting I am happy to report though like I'm very proud of myself to report that um, I ate exceptionally well this week I've had kale like at least five times I've gotten my fruits and my berries and my flax seeds and my cruciferous veggies. I have gotten it in. So eating well has been one of the few things I've been able to do well <laughs> consistently. I am a little curious though right now. I have my Vitamix here and obviously it was blended like fairly high and then there's a whole banana. How the fuck did that happen? Anyway. Mm-hmm. So, berries. Berries have appeared in very many other chapters of this book. Notably for me was the, um, the Parkinson's chapter when he was talking about Barry's ability to, like, detoxify and prevent damage from dioxins and other environmental contaminants that could get into our brains and make our proteins go all crazy and clump up together. And the fact that berries could prevent the like, reverse damage that could be done to our brains is just it's so encouraging for me because brain disease is one of those things that does really scare me I know that we've talked about it before so the fact that berries could potentially be able to prevent that um that like beta amyloid plaque and what's the other one called what's the other type of Anyway, it's able to prevent that weird protein folding that can cause brain disease. That's really exciting for me. So I've been making sure to get my berries in. Mm. 
I was really excited because I found a source of frozen berries where I can get like three pounds of organic frozen blueberries for ten dollars. So I'm really excited about that. Mm. Mm. Lee Alaska says, does that plaque like the beta amyloid plaque build up because of toxins? Um, in the Parkinson's chapter of How Not to Die, let me see if I can find that, uh, that page for you if you have a copy of the book. Um, he discusses Barry's ability to um, detoxify those environmental contaminants on page, starting on page 235 and going through page 236. And he talks about um, how berries can prevent that folding. And actually, some studies have shown that they can undo the folding and the plaque ac accumulation. And yes, it does appear that um, some common household pesticides are able to cause that misfolding of proteins to happen. Of course, there are many other causes. Science is still trying to figure out exactly what it is. But there are a lot of things associated with those building up in the brain, such as um, cholesterol, such as environmental toxins, such as the pesticides, and um, not getting enough sleep. So it's really important, really important to do what we can to take care of our little brains. And apparently eating berries is one of the things that can do that. And since berries are one of the few health foods that I feel like are just genuinely delicious, like, I just celebrate it every day, being able to eat berries. Mm. Oh, I burped. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Devon, Devin, I assume it's Devin, and, but it's, if you want to be Devon, that's fine too. Um, she says, have you done any research on what's better, wild or organic blueberries? Um, I know that, goodness, I can't remember if it was, I think it is, yeah, in the berries chapter. On page 290, it says the antioxidant power of berries, and Dr. Greger says that um, wild berries can be significantly higher. Um, yeah, it's page 290. Blueberry, 180 units, antioxidant units, and in parentheses it says the wild blueberries may have twice as much. So, um, I know that, like, I could buy... What brand is it? The Wyman's Wild Blueberries as well? Okay, Devin, thanks. A little wink for you. Um, I could buy the Wild Blueberries as well. I think that's like three for 18, three pounds for 18 bucks or something. And I have noticed that like the taste on those are phenomenal. They're of course a little bit smaller and much darker, which would indicate that they're higher in the antioxidants. Um, but it's totally up to you what kind you want to buy. I know that with the wild blueberries, I guess they technically can't be certified organic. Um, so it depends, like, trade off and that. Right now, my main thing is, is just price. I'm going for the cheaper of the blueberries, even though maybe they don't have as high antioxidants. But, hmm. Anyway, I would say that, like, either way that you go... It's just great to have berries in your diet. And certainly if you live in one of those locales, like I grew up in Maine and we had wild blueberry bushes surrounding our house. My sister and I would just go out and gorge several times a day. And when I lived in Washington, I would go out blackberry picking. Like I would literally leave the house with the intention of having a breakfast of blackberries. And it was so good. And I'm so happy to know that it is as healthy as it is. Okay. Oakley Sunshine says, does the consumption of animal products speed up the process of plaque accumulation or can you just slow or reverse it with berry consumption? Um, to the best of my understanding from reading How Not to Die and from watching some of Dr. Greger's other videos, it appears that, that um, the plaque formation, it is kind of like a two-pronged approach that you want to take in reducing animal product formation since the saturated fat and the cholesterol especially has been implicated in the formation of those plaques. So you wanna reduce that, um, that exposure as much as possible and then adding in the berries and or other high antioxidant foods, just the ones that were particularly potent, but just getting in plenty of antioxidant rich 
whole plant foods is a great thing that you can do for your brain health. And since we got onto brain health again, I'll just remind everybody, there's a great book that recently came out. It's called The Alzheimer's Solution. So you should definitely check that book out if that's a topic that appeals to you. Okay. Uh, I says, yeah, so thankful to live in a province where there are plenty of wild blueberries. No Lilacoy in Nova Scotia, though. Yeah, I feel for you there, but I don't know. I would almost trade trade with you for a while just to get some freaking blueberries in my life. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Maya says, I always go all hard eyes when Lily goes into her backyard to pick those gorgeous star fruit and those cute bananas. Yeah. We have a few racks of bananas and a weird season for starfruit right now, so I am very blessed with those fruits. Though it's like, like I say, there's always a trade-off, you know? I do miss the peaches and the nectarines and the plums and the grapes, and all of that is just so expensive here, or it comes in and it's just not ripe, you know? Okay, so we covered the antioxidant power of certain fruits, and I think I think he mentions in here that um, that with berries, like that purple and blue colors, good for us. Those can also be found in like purple sweet potatoes and in red cabbage. So it's definitely not that you just get these great foods from berries. You can get them from all types of foods. So definitely get a nice wide variety of whole plant foods in your diet, and then. Um, Oh yeah, those are the anthocyanin pigments, yeah? Anthocyanin pigments. Um, he also mentions, like he goes through a lot of stuff in this in this chapter, and I feel like it's a little bit, um, rando. <laughs> but he mentions that like cherries are great for inflammation, so have some compounds in them that I think they precipitate. Yeah, like precipitate, they're the, they're what make up melatonin. In our body so it helps our body to produce melatonin so um, cherries and you go into the health food store and you can find like that dark cherry juice that is can be so good for taking like half an hour before bed to help you um, to help you with your melatonin production oh Lucy says I eat so many cherries oh, that's I am I am quite jealous Toastwig, hello from Australia. I assume that's Australia and not Austria. Hello, either one. Awesome. <laughs> Equivocal truth, hi, you could join me. Mm, okay. Yeah, and Lucy says, he said goji is also great for melatonin. Yes, indeed it is. And then the goji berries have that, um, that what was it called? The zeaxanthin in it that builds up in your eyes. And it is highly protective. It's a type of carotenoid. Yeah, carotenoid. I don't but carotenoid. Hello, purely soul by coral. So nice to have you here. Alethea. Alethea. I hope I pronounced that wrong. Hello and thank you. And yes, from the toast week is in Australia. Okay. So the, uh, the zeaxanthin which is the carotenoid, it builds up in your retinas and it's highly protective against vision loss. And that's really the beautiful thing about a lot of carotenoids, carotenoids, um, that are found in orange, orange foods, um, such as sweet potatoes or pumpkin or carrots, you get the, you get the idea. Interestingly, um, carotenoids, they're also really high in greens but greens are so high in chlorophyll that the green color actually overshadows the orange color of the carotenoids in the green, so they are still very high in those compounds, but, um, you know, you can't necessarily tell. And then it's kind of the same thing with the goji berries. Like, um, they look like they're really red, but I know that when I've used them in some recipes, when I was working as a raw food chef at a chef at a health food store, I would make these goji berry bars, and then they would always mysteriously get turned a bright yellow, and then the little flecks of red from the goji berries. And I finally figured out that that was the, um, I guess that's anthin. Please, God. Okay. I think I might be back. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Um, as my story would indicate, those carotenoids or carotenoids, you just call them carotenoids, okay? I'll commit. Carotenoids. Um, those types of antioxidants like beta carotene, they are fat soluble. So that's, um, so that's one of those things where it is important to, hi, yes, I'm back. Thank you. It is important to make sure that you are getting a little bit of fatty acids when you eat those foods. And we're back. Thank you guys so much for hanging in there. It's a spectrum internet. Yes, they're great. Okay. Um, so make sure that you get a little bit of fat with your carotenoids so, um, so that absorption is nice and boosted. It doesn't mean what a lot of paleo people want you to think it means, which is like to take spoonfuls of coconut oil or eat like a fatty piece of steak. That's not necessarily necessary. There are lots of fatty acids in whole plant foods including, you know, like greens are full of great fatty acids, including omega-3 precursor fatty acids. So you don't have to freak out about trying to eat extra fat on top of your whole plant foods so that you can boost the absorption of, of certain, certain phytochemicals in those. It really is a package deal, okay? Mai says, I knew a girl who had put a tablespoon of coconut oil in her tea. Ooh. And I was like, why? Yeah, that's a good question, you know? I'd always see... See, people do that, especially, like, people who put in the butter in their coffee. I know that it's supposed to be, you know, what, like, the bulletproof butter? Never understood it. Never freaking understood it. Okay. So, one important things in this chapter that was mentioned was um, his little gray box that starts on 290 that says, what about all the sugar in fruit, right? Mm. All right, so we'll get to that in just a second. I'm just going to check in with the comments because I see some pouring in. Lucy says, I have a co-worker that does the bulletproof coffee. Bless them. Oakley Sunshine says, my favorite fat source is nut butter. Nut butter is my love. Yes, after I cried for several hours on the floor yesterday, I ate peanut butter while I was laying in bed. <laughs> God, okay. Cass says, hi Lily, I have, I have great success sticking to a mainly whole food diet, but I tend to forget to eat or I won't eat when I'm not hungry but I should be eating quite a bit more food. So what to do? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I deal with the same thing. Sometimes like I'll just get too busy and I'll kind of forget to eat or um, I just keep putting it off or I'm just not hungry and I don't really want to eat, which is a problem I never thought I would have 10 years ago, but hey, here we are. So what I've been trying to do is get myself on more of a schedule. So like I set an alarm for, you know, 9 a.m. and the alarm goes off and even if I'm not hungry, I'll make my ice and I'll, uh, foods off of the daily dozen, like berries, like kale, like like other goodness, turmeric, ginger, you know. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not that hungry, but I'll just pack in as much nutrition as I can without forcing myself to eat, yeah? So I'll do something like that and I'll eat. And then I'll set the alarm again for like, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon. And even if I'm not hungry, I'll make myself eat something, you know? And again, I'll try to make it like nutrient packed as possible. Usually for lunch, it would be vegetables or more fruits or something like that. Um, and then by the time dinner comes around, especially if I've been eating lightly, I tend to be ravenous. <laughs> and um, if, I, if I don't make sure that I have breakfast and some lunch by the time dinner comes around I just want to stuff my face and I want to stuff my stomach until it's bursting and then I go to sleep full and it's not nice and it just becomes an issue and also I found that when I when I don't kind of make myself eat regular nutrient packed meals at the end of the night I'm just so hungry that I want something Tastes good. Salt, yeah. 
Am I back? Come on. Come on, kids. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. The peanut butter is better and cheaper than therapy. Oh dear. Okay. Oh, okay. I love it that it says that it's like still recording and I have Come back. Okay, I know this is going to show up in like the uploaded video. It's going to be ridiculous. Okay, I'm coming to join you, Tubbs. I know. Come on. Watch out. Mom is coming down. Okay. Hold on. You want some smoothie? Okay. Come on. Reconnect already. Now I look yellow. Hi. I don't know. It still says that I'm reconnecting, but I don't know what the frick is going on e anymore. I'm just going to keep talking. Okay? I apologize for video quality. Get out of my smoothie, Petunia. Okay. Oakley Sunshine says, peanut butter is better and cheaper than therapy. I agree. Although I do really like my therapist. 80, hello. Okay. Uh, Mai says, how have you coaxed yourself into eating on those days when you don't feel like it, especially coming from your eating disorder? I struggle with those sneaky thoughts sometimes. Yeah, that's one of those things where I really do kind of, um, I try to motivate myself more with nutrients than, um, than like getting in fuel, I guess, um, how Not to Die has been really helpful for that because um, because I read it and I read about all of the nutrients that are in these foods and that gets me really motivated because I know what it's doing to the inside of my body and all the great things it's doing for my cells and all the anti-aging benefits for my skin and stuff like that. And um, I find that really helpful for me is moting myself through nutrition as opposed to just like, oh, I have to eat. So that's been really helpful. Other ways, again, just like setting an alarm and having kind of a basic meal plan down can be really helpful. Uh, Devin says, do you cook out of the How Not to Die cookbook? Anybody you follow for recipes? Um, I have used the How Not to Die cookbook and I'm really, I got my stepmom into using it and a bunch of other people and you guys know I did the giveaway, so that was really great. Um, for recipes, I don't tend to follow people for recipes because I'm more of a person who cooks just by grabbing stuff out of my pantry and recipes tend to kind of frustrate me. So um, forks over knives I know is really good for recipes. Um, I do like High Carb Hannah. She has a bunch of recipes and stuff and she has them all on the meal planner which I use sometimes for... Um, <laughs> which I use sometimes for mostly just like inspiration. I'm one of those people who I look at the recipe, I kind of look at the flavor, and then whether or not I have everything for that recipe is a whole other thing. But, um, you know, and I just tweak it to make it work for me. Okay. <laughs> uh... Lee Alaska says, slightly unrelated, sorry, but it's absurd. I'm so ready to sleep at 4.30 p.m. Is that okay? Oh, I feel you. It's sad. Um, <laughs> sometimes, I mean, I get tired too. You guys know that I've dealt with the adrenal fatigue stuff, so I try to be respectful of that. But, um, you know. 
I don't necessarily think it's a terrible thing. I know that when I was recovering from adrenal fatigue, I went through a lot of days where I was exhausted at 4.30 p.m. and then just wanted to go to sleep at like 6 o'clock at night, and sometimes I did, and I feel like that was really good for me. So um, I know that it's not necessarily normal, and if it's something that continues, even though you are getting enough sleep and you're getting enough nutrition, um, that's something that I would go to the doctor and get a blood test and just see what is perhaps going on, yeah? Lucy says, oh my God, I listened to the new Ritual podcast today and they talk a lot about added oils, saturated fat, and keto. Everyone should listen later. Yeah, I saw that that one popped up. I think it came out, did it come out on Monday? I don't even, is it Friday? I don't, I don't remember. Anyway, I was a little too overwhelmed to listen to it, but I'm excited to listen to that one too. Cass says, oh, how do you feel about minute rice, brown rice? Um, I'm suspicious of it and it's very expensive. But I would say that on the scheme of things, if a uh, minute rice is the only way that you're going to get uh, whole grains or good nutrition into your body, go for it, right? Mm, excuse me. Okay, I'm glad that the, the picture has improved since I moved and like on top of our router, so good lord. Oakley Sunshine says, I'm currently struggling with the whole calories versus nutrients as well. Since I'm recovering from restrictive eating disorder, I want to move to a whole foods, plant-based diet, slowly but surely. Yeah, it's tough. It's a lot of brain stuff. It's a lot of getting your body used to the idea. It's a lot of, of getting your digestion up to the task because I know for several years when I would eat, my digestion would just get overwhelmed and I would have heartburn and I would feel sluggish and tired. And so it... it definitely takes time. I have found that getting as much nutrients into my body as possible has been really helpful. Um, Lola says, do you think one should aim for 1000 milligrams of calcium or is it excessive? I find it very hard to hit that amount without fortified food products. Yeah, that's something that gets a lot of debates, especially within the plant-based world. Um, I really trust Dr. Neil Barnard of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and he recommends 650 milligrams of calcium per day. Um, he says that sometimes if you get a little bit under that, that's cool. If you get over that, it's probably okay. It's kind of your choice. I know that there have been some studies that have been done on certain populations that have found that people were surviving eating like 150 micrograms of calcium per day, and that seems a little risky to me, you know. The studies found that those people had no issues with bone health, but still, that seems a little risky. You know, I feel more comfortable with 650 grams per day. I think that that is a decent choice, definitely, okay? Okay. Uh, Lana says, minimalist baker has good recipes, but you need to make modifications for oil and other things. Yeah, that's the other thing that kind of irks me about recipes. That's why I like High Carb Hannah's recipes and stuff. Um, Devin says, I love your recipes on your channel. Maybe you could create an ebook. As some of you who have been around for a while know, I am, like I'm working on an ebook. I'm writing an ebook mostly focusing on that one right now that's mostly about dietary philosophy and weight loss and sleep habits and hydration and like emotional health. And um, I've definitely, I wanna be able to offer something that's comprehensive that someone can buy for a very reasonable price and then just have a lot of information to take in, a lot of food for thought. And um, I might have overwhelmed myself with it, might have overdone it a little bit, but I'm really excited about everything that's in that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do we need to store brown rice in the freezer? I assume that that question is in terms of um, like fatty acid oxidation possibly. My thought, like obviously I don't store my brown rice in the freezer because I buy it 25 pounds at a time. Um, I don't think that's necessary. Grains are quite stable. You know, they, they're they made to last many months at a time. So that's not something that I bother doing. If you wanna do that, if you have room in the freezer for that, more power to you. It's probably not gonna hurt you, but I don't, I don't, 
I personally feel like it doesn't need to be done. Okay, I'm going to get back to my notes on how not to die. Gotta turn them around the right direction. Okay, so we left off, we were about to talk about sugar and fruits. So this is something that you hear a lot, especially from paleo people. Um, paleo people, a lot of weight loss gurus, they always say, oh god, there's too much sugar in fruits, it's going to give you insulin resistance and make you ill and make you fat. And, um, hold on, I want to find a good place for this iPad. As Dr. Greger notes, there have not been scientific studies that have indicated that there is such thing as too much fruit, okay? It's just something that doesn't seem to be capable. Um, I know I can speak from experience eating three bananas a day or 20 oranges a day or freaking tons of fruit in general that I have never gotten to a point where I maxed out on my fruit intake. Um, I reversed hypoglycemia with my fruit intake. It's able to heal my hypothyroid with fruit intake, lost plenty of weight eating a lot of fruit. It's not something that's a big problem, okay? Now, that isn't to say that processed sugars are something that's good. Dear God, I'm bright. Hold on. I'm sorry, guys. It's always something. Okay. Set that on the ground. Come over here. Okay. Um, Narsing says, are bananas good for thyroid? I don't think it's that bananas are good for your thyroid, but your bananas are good for your body in general. And that is um, something that will be good for your thyroid by proxy, yeah? Mine says make a cookbook compilation of all your smoothies and bootable recipes. Ooh, that's a good idea. Jesse says I started my 80-10-10 100% whole food. I can't even begin to tell you the changes that have been happening and it's wonderful. I'm kicking myself for not having started sooner. I feel you, man. When you start experiencing these improvements and changes from eating good food, it's like it's such, such a difference. Okay. <laughs> Lana says don't listen to paleo people on advice for anything or advice on anything. I would tend to agree with you there. Um, Oakley Sunshine says, with fruit and your intake in general, is it good to stick to cal a caloric minimum or just eat intuitively? Um, you know, back in the day, I was a really big proponent of sticking to a caloric minimum and like forcing yourself to eat that many calories. And the minimum that I usually recommend is like between 2,000 and 2,200. Um, I think a caloric minimum has, definitely has um, some good points, especially for those of us who are recovering from eating disorders and have that tendency of saying, oh no, I'm eating intuitively, I'm just not hungry, when we are subconsciously or otherwise kind of doing our best to reduce caloric intake so that we can possibly, you know, get skinny and be perfect finally, right? Um, so I think caloric minimums are a good idea for that purpose. I also say after, you know, over half a decade of being in eating disorder recovery that I'm definitely to a point where my body feels like it wants to eat more intuitively, and that doesn't necessarily mean less. It just means... Um, Sometimes not as much. Sometimes I'm not necessarily hungry. Sometimes I'm ravenous. Like, and just letting my body kind of ebb and flow and, and be on its own cycle. I'm sorry. Oh, Petunia. <laughs> so, um, that's kind of my thoughts on that. I would say that for those of us who are recovering and um, who struggle to eat, like, it's not a bad idea to just say... I need to eat 2,000 calories a day, right? Okay, so sugar and fruit, back to that, sorry. So you have fructose and glucose. Those are the primary sugars in fruit. Now the interesting thing is that fructose doesn't even require insulin to get inside your cells. 
So that doesn't mean that fructose doesn't um, promote uh, a release of insulin necessarily. Uh, there definitely is glucose in fruit as well, and that glucose will cause insulin to be released by the pancreas. It's not a bad thing. You know, your body releases some insulin. If you're not insulin resistant from eating a lot of fats, especially animal fats, then your body will respond just fine to that insulin, and the blood sugar will make it into your cells. So that's not a problem. Now, the thing is that processed fruit, processed fruit, processed sugar doesn't react the same way that fruit sugar, natural fruit sugars do. So when you eat um, processed sugar, you know, you'll have a big spike in blood glucose, and that's not necessarily a good thing, you know. Um, you'll have a big spike in glucose, a big spike in insulin, and you can end up having problems from that. When you eat whole fruit, that fruit comes with fiber, and it comes with um, antioxidants. And the fiber helps to slow down how fast the blood sugar is absorbed, or the sugar is absorbed into your blood, and uh, kind of moderate di digestion a little bit, and help to soften that blood sugar spike. And then the antioxidants go a long way in preventing the formation of free radicals while that sugar is being metabolized inside your cells. Does that make sense? I'm trying to check in with comments. Okay. All right. I'm not sure if I'm um, getting comments right now. And is that... That is... Um, Okay. <laughs> okay. I reported him. Don't worry. I'm happy to say that that was one of the very few dick pics I've ever seen in my life. Dear God. Okay. So those inflammation-causing free radicals that you can get from sugar metabolism, you know, sugar metabolism, um... <laughs> Those can be neutralized by the antioxidants that are naturally found in fruits and vegetables, you know, whole plant foods, colorful whole plant foods. So that's why when we're talking about whole fruit, there's really not a way that you can overdo it, right? So that's, that's not something that needs to be worried about too much. Okay, and so that'll kind of bring us into the, the next chapter which is um, just on other fruits. And again, we can continue that conversation, like is there such thing as too much fruits? I don't understand why I keep getting so bright. Technology is failing me. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can maintain that. Hold on. Maybe. I stand here. That's not very good. Okay, I'll just crouch. I'll just like squat in horse stance. It's fine. Okay, so on page 26, Dr. Greger really talks about, you know, how not eating enough fruit is one of the primary causes of death throughout the world. So if we all ate more fruit, then that, that would be great, you know? Um, it would probably, according to that study, reduce a lot of mortality for people that otherwise wouldn't need to die, you know? Um, Lee, Lee Alaska says, is it bad to eat fruit within 24 hours or a certain period of time of eating fatty food because of insulin resistance? Um, not necessarily, I think that, that that's one of those things that you really can't, um, you really won't be able to tease out, you know? I know that people say if you eat a lot of fatty foods, that affects how well your insulin works, and thus the fruit sugars from the fruit will get stuck inside your bloodstream and end up causing a lot of problems. Um, I don't think that's necessarily correct. Now, I do notice that my blood sugar levels get a little more wacky, like after I eat a pint of Ben & Jerry's coconut 
based ice cream, you know? That doesn't mean that I'm not gonna eat fruit, though. That just means that I'm gonna be mindful about how much fat I eat the day after, you know? I hope that makes sense. Um, Jerry says, is tomato really a fruit? Yes, it is really a fruit. Um, Mai says, why people are worried about too much fruit when so many of them don't get nearly enough is beyond me. It's beyond me as well, especially people who eat bacon and then ask if they're overdosing on fruit. Um, Taylor says, is corn good for you? Isn't cooked corn is really hard to digest? Um, that's kind of a hard question to answer with a yes or no question. Um, if corn is cooked properly and or if corn is mixed with an alkaline agent, such as um, the lime powders that it's mixed with traditionally for like masa corn tortillas, that affects how certain nutrients are absorbed in the corn. But I think that corn is another one of those foods that has gotten uh, an unfounded bad reputation from a lot of paleo practitioners. I hope that makes good sense. Emily says, hello. So happy I could catch one of your live streams. Last time I was able to, last time I was able to was in June. Oh, that's a long time. I'm the one kidney girl, if you remember. One kidney girl. I'm not sure I do remember, but that's no reflection on you. <laughs> okay. Chocolate is me fave. All right, we went over the um, the berry chapter, talked about can we eat too much fruit? Pretty much no. Talked about the importance of dietary antioxidants. Um, basically just, you know, went over what was in the book. Hi. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're doing good. We're just talking about fruit. Yeah. The, um, the important thing in the fruit chapter that really stood out for me was the part on juicing, because um, I know so many health-focused health people get into the juicing stuff, and it's one of those things where um, proponents of juicing, which are usually people who sell juicers, I'm just going to say that, um, they claim that the nutrients are better absorbed from juice because you get rid of all that dang fiber and everything else that gets in the way of nutrient absorption. But Dr. Greger mentioned in this chapter that it's actually the opposite is true because so many of the phytonutrients are linked to the fibers in the fruit. And then when those phytonutrients and fibers get into the um, into your intestines and the bacteria eat the fiber, it releases the phytonutrients so that they can be absorbed and used. So it's definitely not true that, that juice is more healthful. In fact, it appears that it could cause issues. Yeah? Equivocal Truth says, juice makes me feel terrible. Even kale, apple, ginger juice causes hypoglycemia. Yeah, I've had a similar experience when I've had juice and um, my juicer doesn't work with the electrical system in our house anymore. I don't know what else to say about it than that. <laughs> but um, I don't juice anymore, but when I did juice, I always found myself taking at least part of the fiber out of the fiber cup and just putting it back in the juice and then it would turn more into a smoothie consistency. I'm sure you guys saw it in the video if you've been with me for a while. All right, so... Um, one of my other favorite things that really stood out was when he talked about citrus and citrus zest and the ability of citrus zest and all of the chemicals in there that um, protect our DNA and actually appear to be able to repair our DNA after it's been damaged. And um, I know living in Hawaii, I get a decent amount of sun exposure and unfortunately I've had several sunburns in my life that were quite severe. So. I am a little bit concerned about the potential of skin cancer development and whatever I can do to prevent that I feel like is smart. And so it's encouraging when you see that people who eat a lot of citrus, especially people who consume part of the citrus peel and the white pithy parts tend to have lower levels of skin cancer. So I'm going to keep up with eating my citrus and I even sometimes eat a little bite of the citrus peel. Did you find Curtis? Yeah. It looked like he was enjoying it. 
Oh, yeah. We had Curtis, our tortoise. He was out in the rain, soaking up some water and eating his little circle grass. Okay. I know he had a bunch of other um, kind of like little anecdotal things in that chapter. So if you guys want to pipe in with your favorites, feel free. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mai says... I'm the same way. I feel like I get a juice crash. Yeah, from drinking juice. I get that too. It just doesn't work out for me. Um, Chocolate is my fave says, thank you. I haven't read at all the past two weeks. I have a lot of catching up to do. I prefer to eat my fruit rather than juicing them. That's great. And I feel you on being a little bit overwhelmed. Um, Job Neil 7 says, do you drink distilled water? I don't drink distilled water. I drink um, filtered water water, filtered tap water that I then drop a couple um, things of mineral drops in. <laughs> and I like that quite a bit. And um, just to let you guys know, I do have to go in a couple of minutes. So I apologize for the shorter session, but um, Oakley Sunshine says, does zest aid in DNA replication? Um, I don't remember it having anything to do with DNA replication, but I do remember it being highly protective against DNA mutagens and being able to potentially repair damaged DNA. Ah, they say hi. Hope you're well, Levi. I'm good. I explained to them we've had an overwhelming couple of weeks. But yeah. 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 Okay. Michelle says, I love this book, but it terrifies me. I can understand that. I love this book too. It really motivates me. Um, I definitely find the parts about viruses kind of terrifying, but that's about it. Hello, Britt. I'm so sorry because I'm about to take off, but I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. Okay. Oakley Sunshine as a biology major. This stuff intrigues me. That's awesome. Very good. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to take off. We're going to go pick up the girls, and then I have to go to the other book club since um, we're down to one car. <laughs> i got to coordinate things a little bit better. Well, okay. Uh, Lola says, this is irrelevant to fruit, but what is your opinion on coffee? I read that it contains antioxidants and basically inhibits certain nutrients. Absorption. Okay, um, this will be the final the final thought and then I'm gonna take off. So coffee, it does contain antioxidants and it does contain chemicals that can inhibit nutrient absorption. So a lot of studies have found that coffee is really protective against certain issues, especially like Parkinson's disease. It's really great for the treatment and prevention of liver issues. So coffee definitely has its place as a health food. Um, you just wanna make sure that you're not having too much of it. Like having an excessive amount of coffee is a little bit unnecessary and it's not going to do you any favors. Um, if you do want to consume coffee, make sure that it's black coffee, that you're not adding in a bunch of sugar or milk or like high fat foods. Just have black coffee, maybe a splash of almond milk or something in it. Um, you don't want to have a crazy blood sugar spike. Uh, coffee can and does raise stress hormones slightly. It raises cortisol, which isn't a bad thing. Cortisol is naturally higher in the morning, so if you start your mornings with a cup of coffee, it's not going to be that much of a significant difference. However, like I said, coffee can inhibit nutrient absorption, so you just want to be wise about when you eat it. Like, I'm not going to have coffee and then eat a kale salad with my coffee because I'm just not going to get all the good nutrients out of the kale that I would if I had it separate from the coffee. So... If and when I were to drink coffee, I'm more of a tea girl myself, but if and when I were to drink coffee, I would do it first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, and then if you wait about an hour after drinking that coffee to eat your mineral-rich foods, you will have no issues with nutrient absorption. The one other thing about coffee is that it can inhibit your body's ability to convert fatty acids into omega-3s. So... If you're a regular coffee or tea or alcohol drinker, I think it might be wise to supplement your omega-3s with an algae-based omega-3 supplement, right? Um, you also need some B12 because coffee can inhibit B12 absorption, okay? But I think we all probably take 
our B12 supplements at this point. Okay? Okay. So that's it. I will see you guys later. Thank you guys so much, all of you. Michelle, <laughs> have a great day. Um, book club will be next week, this time, this place, Friday, 2 p.m. Hawaiian time. What chapters are we doing? Hold on. Next week we're doing three, three chapters. We're doing cruciferous vegetables, greens, and other vegetables. So we'll be getting all of the vegetables covered from the Daily Dozen, okay? I love you guys. Thank you for showing up. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for understanding about my absence last week. I appreciate it. Take good care. See you. Bye.